You know, I'm guessing there can't be too many of us who haven't at some time fantasised about living in our dream home. And for this next family, years of scrimping and saving had at last put that tantalising prospect within reach. But when they eventually found themselves able to afford the renovation work, I'm afraid the builder that they'd thought was going to be trustworthy turned out to be anything but. Now, in so many cases, that's where the cowboy builder might end, but not this time. Because thanks to the combined forces of a wronged homeowner and a team of trading standards officers, the builder who'd left homes unfit to live in was finally brought to justice. Every year, trading standards officers in Lancashire deal with around 5,000 cases. And while most are small disputes and complaints, earlier this year, Lauren Manning and Nick McNamara closed one of the biggest cases of their careers. In this particular case, we we're talking about hundreds of thousands of pounds, and certainly for me, it was the biggest case that I've ever dealt with. Quite frankly, I was shocked by what I was reading. It's quite clear that this was a extreme case of a bad builder. The case saw Lancashire-based builder Michael McDonnell tried and convicted after negligent building work had left the homes of several families unfit to live in. We are talking about life-changing amounts that these people have spent on these property renovations. You definitely want to do everything you can to help because they've just seen their life turned upside down. When the case came to court this summer, it was the culmination of almost a year's work for Lauren, who'd spent months gathering evidence against the builder. But thanks to the work of the woman at the centre of the case, Lauren did at least have a head start. Angela Cartwright and her husband Peter bought this cottage back in 2009 and spent years dreaming about extending it. It was a tiny house, it was mouldy, derelict. But we saved, we got married, but we didn't have a, a wedding. We saved, we had our children, we didn't have a christening party, we, we saved. It was a family home, gorgeous area, and we just loved it, we fell in love with it. And when they'd finally saved enough to start the work, Angela asked no fewer than five companies to quote for the job. She duly checked their references, and the builder that most impressed was Michael McDonnell, owner of Wigan-based MM Projects UK Limited, which should not be confused with other companies with similar names. He came, he was smart, he was well-dressed, his vans were nice. We checked his website, he claimed to work on Manchester Airport, a football stadium. Um, we went to see a house that he'd been working on, they were happy with the build. He came, he engaged, he showed us photographs of his family, he was charming. He, he definitely talked the talk. His quote was the second most expensive of the five, but confident that Michael McDonnell would deliver, the couple signed a fixed price contract, which should have meant that whatever happened, the amount that they would pay would remain the same. Everything seemed great. I was telling people at the school how fast it had gone up. We were over the moon, we couldn't believe it. The foundations had gone down so fast, they'd set so fast, the walls had gone up so fast. But while the build seemed to be going well, McDonnell was also billing the couple for extras that he said were not part of that fixed price contract. It was only when Angela queried those costs and called one of the suppliers that the couple started to grow suspicious. He wanted £6,000 for bifold windows to complete the window watertight stage. We'd called the company, they said no, there'd been a preliminary order but no money was required. And um, We'd had a second date for the bifolds, then a third date for the bifolds, and on the fourth guaranteed date, he'd said he'd made a mistake with the measurements, and that was the first thing we knew, there was anything wrong. As time went on, Angela and Peter started to have more worries about the build. But when they raised their concerns with McDonnell, he seemed to have an answer for everything. And to really win their confidence, he assured them that their contract included regular checks from an independent building control officer who was overseeing the whole project. Being quite ignorant to the building process, we were happy that there was a building control firm that we'd paid for to come to this house and would be overseeing the build. We were told on several occasions he'd been and everything was all right. As the months went on, Angela and Peter grew more concerned about some of the work they were seeing. Angela wanted to discuss her worries with the building control officer, but McDonnell wouldn't reveal who that was. 
I, in the end, phoned the council up and that's how I found out who our building control people were. When Angela finally tracked down the inspector, she discovered there were no plans for any further visits because McDonnell hadn't paid the £700 bill for the previous inspections. So Angela settled the account in order to get another inspector to check the house. But by then, she could see even more evidence of McDonnell's bad work. The windows were bowing. Mould was appearing in massive big blocks. There was obviously the leak through the house. We couldn't find any electrics or plumbing for the kitchen area. We really knew then we were in trouble. By this point, Angela and Peter had paid MM Projects £85,000, more than 80% of the total budget. And when they asked a friend who worked in construction for some advice, he revealed faults with almost everything, from the foundations to the roof. He'd look round the house. They said, Angela, please don't give him anything more. Stop paying him. I was sick, to be honest. They put their long list of concerns in writing and refused to pay any more money. So, with those payments cut off, work on site ground to a halt. In desperation, Angela took to social media to share her experiences. And she was soon contacted by people whose homes had been left in a similar state by the company. I posted a picture of the house and a video of the state it was in. And within four days, four other victims had, had got in touch. We gathered our names together. We wrote a synopsis of what had happened. Lauren from Trade and Standards took our case. She was our rock, really, that she, she saw the injustice of it. Based on the response to Angela's post, it was clear to Lauren that hers was not an isolated case. When she reported this matter to us, she was also aware of a number of other people who had had similar stories to tell. So the case quickly grew into something a lot bigger. Lauren set about building the case against McDonnell. From the complaints received, she identified three cases that she felt were most likely to secure a conviction. But there were plenty of other people she needed to speak to. They included traders that he owed money to, um, suppliers, workmen that he'd employed and not paid. So there were a lot of victims in the case. I'm not a builder, but you can immediately see when you get here just the state that the property is in and the amount of work that's going to be required to get this put right. Angela and Peter commissioned an independent surveyor to assess the quality of the work for which they paid £85,000. Don Waterworth has been surveying buildings for 30 years. And as soon as he saw this one, he knew the workmanship meant that it wasn't just uninhabitable, but in places dangerous. Wholly wrong, absolutely a mess. We don't have any drains under the extension, which is a real cause for concern. This knoll needs to be ripped up and this is, needs to have a brand new floor with new underfloor eating. There's a massive amount of damp coming through. That's penetrating rainwater. It's penetrated the brickwork above the extension and just soaked all the way down. That should never happen. You never use these on the outside. These are normally used on the inside, so I'm afraid it's knock it down and start again. This is probably the worst one I've seen in 30 years. Don passed his damning evidence to Lauren at Trading Standards, where she'd also received equally critical evidence about the other builds that were central to this case. The second victim in the case says in particular the foundations of the extension and the whole thing had to be redone. She says it's in the region of £45,000 extra that she's had to pay to get this put right and brought in line with building regulations. As the case gathered momentum, Lauren drafted in Trading Standards Prosecutor Nick McNamara, who prepared the painstakingly gathered evidence for the court hearing. Many of the witnesses in the case were required to give evidence. Claims were levelled at the witnesses, accusations put to them that they were lying and they couldn't afford for the work to be done and that was why they were actually uh, making these complaints to trading standards. But the magistrates uh, dismissed all of those uh, and convicted the uh, company and Mr MacDonald of all the offences. McDonnell and the company were found guilty of engaging in unfair commercial practices towards the Cartwrights and another family who'd been assured that McDonnell had secured planning permission for their extension. Not only was that untrue, but the workmanship was so poor that parts of the building had to be completely replaced. 
In September, he was sentenced to 15 months in prison and fined £2,000, while the court also ordered an investigation into which of his assets could be seized and used to compensate his victims. It was satisfying at the end to see a good result and to see the outcome that we wanted. We approached Michael McDonnell, but he chose not to comment. And while the case may be finished, it'll be a long time before Angela and her family get over it completely. We had a bit of a breakdown, both myself and my husband, because we blamed, uh, I blamed myself, he blamed himself. It was our big all or nothing kind of uh, life changing experience. So we fought, we separated, we got back together. It's shattered us, it's, it's, it's broken us, but we just need to um, move on.